All right, today we're gonna to be talking about different ways to find the measure of angles. And remember that we always start out with four types of angles. And if you have trouble remembering those, remember there's the word eros, which stands for acute, right, obtuse, and straight. And you need to know that because the very first thing you need to do is you need to identify the angle. So on this angle, I would say that it is acute because if I stuck my yellow sheet of paper in there and lined it up, this line would hide behind the yellow sheet of paper. So I know that this is an acute angle. Okay, the next step you need to do is decide are you using the top or the bottom zero. If I'm using the bottom zero, I'm gonna look at all of these numbers. If I'm using the top zero, which is hidden by my array here, I'm gonna look at all these numbers. So that's gonna help me decide which set of numbers I'm using. You may also think about uh, inside, outside. This is the top zero, so I'm gonna put top here. Now, if I had an, uh, an array that was bouncing between two numbers, like if the array was setting here, then I would say 80 and 90 as my third step. But this one is right on a number, so then I can go ahead and write what the measurement is, and the measurement is 70. So that's pretty easy. Classify it, decide you're using the top or the bottom, and then tell me what number it is on. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, here's the next one. How is this one different from the last one? Yeah, it's an obtuse angle. So remember, the first thing you need to do is classify it. I should put these sticky notes on the other side of my left-handedness. Okay, so this is obtuse. Okay, then I'm gonna decide, is it the top or the bottom, the inside, the outside, whichever way is easier for you to remember. So I'm looking for zeros. This zero is on the bottom. I do not have a ray going through it. This zero is on the top. I have a ray slicing right through it. So I'm gonna be looking at these numbers. So let's say, I'm gonna say my answer is 30 degrees. Yeah, that's why we classify it because obtuse is not 30 degrees. So that's kind of your safety net. And you're like, oh, I messed up. So I know that I should not be looking at that bottom number, I should be looking at the top. Now this happens sometimes, that ray is covering that number up. So this might be where you need to look at the number before it and the number after it. So I have 140 and 160, and it's clear to see they're counting by tens. 100, 110, 120, 130, 140. So this must be 150 degrees. Okay, oops, I forgot my step. I forgot to tell you this, the top or the bottom, we talked about it, but I forgot to write it down. It is the top, and then it is 150 degrees. So you should always be doing at least three steps. And then if it's jumping in between something, then you'll do a few more. Okay, let's go to, make sure I'm in the right spot, the next one, right here. Okay, so let's classify. That's my first thing. Ask yourself arrows, acute, right, obtuse, or straight. Stick your paper in. And I see that this is making a straight line. So I know that this is a straight angle. Now, if you remember that straight angles are 180 degrees, then you are done here. If not, it's gonna be, you're just gonna have to pick a zero because it's touching both zeros. But if you went with the inside, then it would be landing on 180. Or if you went with the outside, it would be landing on 180. So either way, it's 180. Okay, let's go to the next one. Now we get a little more complicated. Because I have a bunch of angles on here. So you're gonna have to know which is your angle. And remember to name an angle, we use three letters 
and the middle one is always the vertice. So if I were to name any of these angles, B would have to be in the middle because they all share that common vertice. And remember, the vertice is the point of it, okay, where the two rays join together. So if I were talking about this angle, I would say A, B, C. And you see the way I'm highlighting that. That's a very good thing to do to help you figure out what angle they're talking about. I want us to look at angle A, B, E. So let's do angle A. Okay, so I'm gonna take my highlighter and I'm gonna highlight A, B, E. There it is. Okay, so let's go through our steps. Remember, number one is to classify. So if I were to take my yellow card, stick it inside here, I could see that it would lay right here on this line and then my card would stop right here because my card's a right angle. I have all this extra out here. So I know that this is an obtuse angle. Eros, acute, right, obtuse, straight. We're gonna go with obtuse. And you could abbreviate, that's perfectly fine. Okay, now I need to decide, is it inside or is it outside? Or is it top or is it bottom? Okay, here's my zero. And here's my zero. Yeah, it's not going through either of them. So do you know what we have to do? Yes, we have to outside, outside, subtract. Remember, if it's not laying on zero, then you have to outside, outside, subtract. So I'm gonna look at this number. It's covering it up, so I'm gonna kinda go 110, 120, 130, 140, 150, 160, 170. And I'm gonna look at this number. Now this one is bouncing in between two numbers. Okay, and this is where we're gonna have to look at it and decide what it's gonna be. So it's bouncing, and make sure you write this the right way, between 40 and 50. So it looks like it's pretty much right in the middle of 40 and 50. So what comes right in the middle of 40 and 50? Not 55. If I counted 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, right in the middle would be 45. And that's why we write these, because you're big kids enough to know that 55 does not come between 40 and 50 on the number line. So that's why we have to write that. So then I'm just gonna go outside, outside, subtract. Once you've figured out the measurements, you've done the hard part, because you know how to subtract. I'm gonna regroup here. This would be five, this would be two, and it'd be 125. Check myself, is 125 an obtuse angle? It is, so I'm good. I could also add these two numbers to go back and make sure I get back to 170 to make sure that I didn't miss subtract somewhere. Okay, so that's when you have multiple angles together, highlight it, and then just work through your steps, okay? All right, let's go to our next die, which is now we're finding missing angles. So we're not on a protractor anymore. All these up here were on protractors, okay? Now we've come and we're on just figures they've drawn for us and we have to figure out the missing angles. So for example, I gotta figure out J. Same process. First, we're gonna arrows it. So we're gonna decide is it acute, right, obtuse, or straight? And J, if I were to stick my yellow card in there, let's do, if I were to stick my yellow card in here, let's try this and see if this will help us. Oh, perfect. Okay, so you can see that I lined up on the, let's see if I can make it transparent, but I lined it up on the, on the ray, and then you can see that this part of the line hides behind the card. So then J is acute, okay? Now here's the next thing I want you to see. I can see that this part of the line and this part of the line line up perfectly with that square. So then I know that this angle overall is a right angle. And so now I'm gonna to go to a strip diagram. Ask yourself, do you know the whole? And most of the time, here's what you're gonna see. You're either gonna see the whole being 90 degrees, 
the whole being 180 degrees or the whole being something that they tell you, like it's 156 degrees or 130. In this case, ask yourself, do you see a right angle? Yes, we do. So let's go with the 90. So my whole is gonna be 90. And I see that this angle is made up of two pieces. And I know one is 78, but I don't know the other, that's gonna be J. Now going back to the use of strip diagrams, we have our whole, so we know we are not adding, we are not multiplying. We're either subtracting or dividing. And in this case, I'm not missing multiple pieces, so I know I'm not dividing, so I'm gonna be subtracting. So I'm gonna say 90 minus 78. And let's do our subtraction. And I know that that would be 12 degrees. And I could check myself by saying 78 plus 12 and make sure I get back to 90. Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's see if I can carry this nice little square with me. Because I liked it. I'm to erase all this lovely stuff. This guy looks good. Okay, let's take the square. Hopefully. Come on, little square. All right, let's go to the next one. Let's zoom it out a little bit. Okay, here's my square now. Let me measure these angles. So remember, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to classify. So what is K? So let me take K and take my little square. I've laid it on a ray. So let's look. I've got, whoops, little square. Okay, there we go. There we go. I've got a ray here. And then this other ray comes out here. So it is bigger than my 90 degrees. So if it's bigger than my 90 degrees, then this is obtuse. Now remember, I told you most of the time you will see a hole with a right angle, a hole with a straight line, which we know is 180 degrees, or it will tell you the hole, like it'll have an arc, it'll just say like 156 degrees. So look, what do you see here? Do you see a right angle? Do you see a straight line? Or do you see where they did something like this and they told us what it is? Yeah, I see this straight line right here. So I'm gonna go to my strip diagram. And I know my hole is 180 degrees. So I'm gonna take that and I'm going to look and see how many pieces I have here. So I have two pieces that make this up. I have one and I have two. Okay, one of them is 45 and the other is K. Go back to your strip diagrams, you have your whole so you know you are subtracting or you are dividing. I'm not missing multiple pieces, so I know I'm not dividing, because then I would have like a couple of Ks there. I know that I am subtracting. So I'm gonna do 180 minus 45, and that will get my answer, okay? I'm gonna move on for time's sake, so I don't drag on too much. Okay, here's my next scenario. Let's see if I can make another square real quick. So ask yourself, is it, Acute, obtuse, or right. This guy for us in a minute. I'm gonna pull this in. Now notice this is a little bit different. How is this different from the last one we looked at? Do you see a right angle? No, remember I told you that it might be a right as your whole. Do you see a straight line? No, so that may be one of our holes. Does it like tell me the hole? Kinda. Do you see how it has a letter for the hole? So I'm looking at, let me highlight it, I'm looking at this whole angle right here. Now I want you to notice, we've been looking at pieces of angles. Like I've been looking at this one little piece or this one little piece, but this time it's changed because I am looking at the hole. So my hole is missing this time. My hole is gonna be L. So that is clearly bigger than my, here's my right angle. And this other ray of this angle goes way out here. So it is bigger than my 90 degrees. So this is an obtuse angle. 
Now, I am going to do differently because I have my two pieces now. I have 32 degrees, 85 degrees. So I'm missing my whole. So I know I'm going to add or multiply. Which am I going to do? Yeah, I can't multiply because you don't see 32, 32, 32. You see two different numbers. So I know I would say 32 plus 85 and add them together, eight, nine, 10, 11, that gets me 117. And remember to check, I could take these two, subtract, and I should get back to 32 if I did it right, okay? So this is like number three, we've looked at the whole being 90, the whole being 180, and this time they told us the whole, even though it was missing, it was L, but we knew that the whole was gonna be what we were looking for, so we had to add. Okay, I think we have one more already got my square there. Okay, so let's look and see what we're encountering. Are we encountering our whole being 90, our whole being 180, or our whole being told to us? Like, here it is, here's, the, here's what it is. Yeah, it's being told to us, it's right here. It's telling us that the whole is 52. Okay, so let's use our little square to decide if I'm looking at something that is acute, obtuse, right, or oops, straight. And I like it when I hold it down because it goes transparent and you can see, oops, sorry. You can see that that's hiding right there behind it. So you can see that T is cutting right here. So it's hiding behind my square, so we know it's smaller than 90 degrees. So this is going to be acute. Okay, now I need to draw my stroke diagram. I see that there are two pieces here. There's 21 and there's T, and then I see this, and I see this here, so this means it is my whole. Now sometimes, guys, you might encounter even a third piece, so you'd have to draw a third piece and maybe they're going to put t, you know, divide t in half or something. But in this case, we don't see that. So then I'm going to take these two and I'm going to either subtract or divide because I have my whole. And yes, I'm going to subtract because like I said, I'm not missing multiple pieces like that. That would tell me to subtract and then divide. So I'm just going to subtract and remember I can add to check my answer. I think we've encountered all the ways that I can think of. The only other thing you might see, friends, is drawing to a specific measure. So let me show you really quick what that would look like. I think that's the only thing I forgot. So if I'm drawing to a specific measure, it might say, draw an angle of, let's do 55 degrees. And then they might have something like a letter S, let's see, a letter T, a letter V, and let's say a letter U. And if it says to draw a 55 degree angle, well, let's kind of walk through our steps again. We know that 55 is gonna be an acute angle. So I would go and classify it just to help me. Then I would do the same thing. Is it on the top? Is it on the bottom? Is it on the inside? Is it on the outside? So it is not on the bottom or the inside. It is on the top. So I'm gonna be looking at these numbers here. So I would write top. And then I would go back and look to see which one would complete my angle, okay? So if I were to draw a ray on you, can you tell me what that would be? Yeah, that would be 45 degrees. Now they put that there because a lot of you go, oh, that's gonna be 55 degrees because it comes after 50. But you gotta remember your numbers are going 10, 20, 30 this way. Okay, so it's not gonna be you. Let me show you another common mistake. A lot of people would go T. But that right there, you should go, oh, that's an obtuse angle and I need something that's acute. That would be if you were looking at the bottom numbers, which you should not be doing, because we wrote top, we wrote acute. Those are your safety checks. So both of those, you should go, nope, I know that's not right. So my angle is going to be right here for the letter S. Because it's acute, 
I'm looking at the top numbers. If I needed to, I could write it's bouncing between 50, 60, and we were looking for 55. I know in a number line that 55 would go there. So that would be drawing to a given angle or drawing through a point to find a given measure. Everything else, follow the steps guys. Classify it inside, outside. Is it bouncing in between anything? And that will help you greatly if it's setting on a protractor. Now, if it's something on the bottom that we were looking at, these, ask yourself, is it out of 90? Is it out of 180? Also classify it and then do your strip diagram. Okay, and the third one was, if it's not setting on zero, outside, outside, subtract. Okay, so just keep those in mind and that will make everything a lot easier for you to work with when you come to angles. And don't forget that little angle card that will help you greatly.